What's up you guys, I'm Travis, this is Shop Nation, and today we're tackling a house project, which is probably easier if I just show you. This video series is sponsored by Craig Tool. Now as you walk in from our garage, you enter our laundry room slash mud room, and directly to my left is this closet with some sliding doors, which is a just a pile of shoes at this point. So we're gonna fix this today. And what we wanna do is remove the doors and create sort of a built-in space here that has a bench where you can sit down and put on and take off your shoes, a place to store your shoes, and a place to hang all of our coats. Now this closet originally had a bunch of those wire shelves which we immediately ripped out upon moving in like you've seen me do in other videos like the pantry build we did just around the corner. But in essence, what we're left with is a blank slate which we can build really whatever we want. But the first step is gonna be clearing it all out, removing any remaining brackets that are still up on the walls, patching a bunch of holes, removing the bottom trim, and getting the whole thing painted before we can start building. All right, so the first unsolicited tip from this build is to use a large putty knife behind your pry bar so you don't pop holes in your drywall during this step. Now for me, it doesn't really matter because this is gonna be covered, but most of the time, you wanna salvage the wall itself. Using that putty knife to more evenly distribute that force makes for much cleaner trim removal. Okay, so once we got everything out of the way, there's a couple more things I need to do in here in order to move on to the next step. The first one is to put a piece of trim up along the top of this opening. It's gonna cover up those holes and the screws that were left from where the tracks were mounted. I'll then go back and caulk that and repaint all the trim so it all matches. And the next thing is to address all of the holes in the walls and to fix all of the drywall issues so that we can go ahead and paint it before putting everything in place. If you caught my last video, you saw me talk about mag switches. I have got to show you this mag switch feather board, which uses two of these beefy magnets. Easily my new favorite table saw accessory that you can put anywhere on your cast iron top. Now you can also, of course, use this on other tools around the shop as well. Go check that out if you'd like to learn more, link down below. So yes, I could have just repaired the existing frame, but there's a couple of questionable spots that would have taken some TLC to blend. So I figured this is probably the quickest and easiest fix. And it really should disappear once it's all painted. Now for all those damn drywall holes. I found that first scraping the holes to remove any rough edges definitely helps. Then you can either push in the hole slightly, which will get filled with joint compound, or if the hole is large enough, use some fiber tape to create a mesh that the joint compound can really stick to. Then just remember to over apply the mud so it can be sanded back smooth later. And now easily the messiest part of the job, sanding. And just a heads up, you are gonna cover everything in the room with white dust. So just get ready for it. Either cover it up or prepare to clean it. And definitely protect your lungs with a quality mask or respirator. While I'm at work, you know, at my regular day job, my wife actually spearheaded the painting. We decided to repaint the entire laundry room while we're at it, but the inside of this closet is what really matters for this project specifically. And with the messy drywall work finally done, we can now build the actual thing that's gonna sit inside of the closet. And the first part of that build is actually pretty easy. It's just a simple two by four frame that's gonna sit on the floor that the bench is then gonna sit on top of. Once we're done, it all get trimmed out so you'll never see any of the two by fours. It's just a structure on which it sits. Shameless plug for my 3D printed stop block. I'm telling you having something like this is a game changer. 
Repetitive cuts are a breeze and this will eliminate a lot of inconsistency. Get one for your shop and support the channel by visiting my Etsy shop, which I'll link down below. Now speaking of making things a breeze, my new Craig Jig 720 Pro makes very quick work of adding a lot of pocket holes to all of these 2x4s. And the dust collection is incredible. And we finally get to the point where we get to start to build the bench itself. Now, I'll be honest, I don't have a totally fleshed out plan as to what this thing is totally gonna look like. I did model it up in Fusion 360 to give myself sort of an idea. But to be honest, at least in my experience, most projects like this involve some element of make it up as you go. So let's go make it up. Also really loving my little compact wood storage cart I just built. I actually have a video on that as well as a set of plans if you need one for your shop. But even with its small size, it stores a lot of random cutoffs and really easily pushes out of the way when I don't need it. Now this weird cutout is to accommodate the equally weird shape of the closet. Now I'm marking and cutting out channels for stringers that will run along the top of the vertical dividers in the lower bench. These will keep all those dividers square and allow for a place to secure the eventual top of the bench too. So I think now is as good a time as any to talk about the sponsor of today's video and that's Craig Tool. Now, if you've been watching my channel since the very beginning or even knew me before I got on YouTube, you know that I've been using Craig products for a long time. To put it simply, they make tools and jigs for you and I, dummy weekend warrior types, that give us the ability to build really cool stuff. Now, I use a ton of Craig products all the time and I actually still have the simple little handheld Craig jig that I got when we first bought a house when I wanted to start putting together some basic stuff. This thing still comes in handy and is a testament to both the quality and the usefulness of Craig's products. I think one of my favorite things about Craig Tool is their constant innovative approach. Like take their K5 pocket hole system that I had for many years that never had any complaints with. Well, they improved upon this and came out with the 720 Pro, which is light years better than this one. And this one wasn't even bad to begin with. Now I'll leave a link down below to all my favorite Craig products as well as the Craig Tool website so you can go check out everything they have to offer, but I have literally not found anything they make, which is not good, including the router lift that lives inside of my new workbench. Big thanks to Craig Tool for sponsoring this video series and Let's get back to it. Okay, I've got all the pieces cut out. I've got pocket holes drilled. I think I have a plan, but now I need to think about order of operations putting this thing together because there is a way to put it together where I won't be able to finish it. And that includes painting. So I might have to paint this in steps and then put it together. I don't know. This is uh, the side effects of not having a plan, but we'll get there. So I did decide on keeping this separated in two parts. This is what I'll call the center section which is pretty awkward to put together on its own. I'm using some spacers below the shelf to set the height on the vertical divider. Now this is attached with glue and pocket hole screws for a little bit of extra strength. Now the other section, uh, the outer section, is a little bit more straightforward to put together. Using some clamps while I'm driving in those pocket hole screws. Okay, so now I can go ahead and just dry fit everything on top of that two by four frame we built earlier. Now it should just be a piece of cake, no pr Son of a <laughs> Luckily, glue was still wet so I could fix my mistake. I accidentally glued one of the vertical dividers on the outer section on the wrong side of my line. 
Details, people. Details. Okay, I've got everything taken back apart and I'm gonna go ahead and put on a coat of primer on the entire thing. And you'll notice that I'm rolling it and brushing it versus spraying it, which is what I would normally do. Frankly, I'm just too lazy to mask off an entire area to use my sprayer for something this big, so this is gonna have to do. Now, since I'm not painting every square inch of this bench, since a lot of it is actually going to be hidden, a sprayer, frankly, becomes a little bit less attractive because I'd probably end up applying way too much paint. A sprayer typically pays off in terms of efficiency when you either have a large surface area or lots of details for both. This particular project really has neither, so a roller is perfectly fine. Really, I'm just justifying my laziness by not masking everything off. And with the primer coat done on these while they're apart, I'm actually gonna leave them apart and do the first coat of actual paint as well. I won't bore you with that, it looks just like that. It's also gonna be painted white. In the meantime, I've also gone and primed that piece of trim that we added to hide the area where the track was mounted and the door opening. And then once we get everything in place, I'll do a final coat in place while everything is there so it all matches. So to answer your inevitable question, why are those stringers in two sections? Well, I'm building this project mostly from offcuts in my shop and I didn't quite have a piece of half inch plywood long enough to span the entire thing. Trust me, it really won't matter though. I pre-drilled and countersunk the holes which I'll use to secure the bench top to this lower frame. It's just easier to do now. And a classic measurement error. Again, won't really matter in the end. You'll never see this but it will live in my soul as a constant reminder to triple measure. Sometimes a little leverage is what's needed to get things back in square. And since I don't want to see any fasteners on the inside of this shelf, I'm going to screw in the center divider from underneath in order to keep them hidden. All right, moment of truth. Please fit, just fit. Hoo -hoo. Never a doubt. Ta-da, a bench. Okay, it doesn't really look like a bench yet. I still have to add the face frame, obviously add the top, for the top, I'm gonna use a big old slab of butcher block that I'm gonna stain to kind of get close to the floor color, but not exact. And then we've got a bunch of other stuff to do, like the whole back, a shelf, but this is actually gonna do it for part one of this video series. It's gonna be a two-part series. The next video is obviously gonna be right after this one. If you're not already subscribed, go ahead and do that and turn on notifications so you know when it comes out. So I know it doesn't look like we made a ton of progress, but trust me, we did. The next steps, which I mentioned, are the face frame, the top, the back, the shelf, the hooks and the shelves that's gonna to go together extremely quickly. And all of that is gonna be covered in part two, which should be following this video. A big thanks to Craig for sponsoring this video series. And until next time, keep pursuing shop greatness. <laughs>